Hi, welcome back to Genesis Custom Savers. And happy Canada Day! A couple of months ago, you may remember that I challenged other prop makers to do a project with me that would be fun for the summer. To take a common beer fridge or bar fridge and to Star Wars it. And I'm ready to reveal mine just in time for summer festivities beginning today, July 1st, Canada Day. This is my Star Wars beer fridge. I took it from this to this. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. So for this prop, it's obviously not a replica. Something from my own imagination that looks like it would fit in Star Wars. I was thinking about a droid, maybe a, a gonk droid, but I'd already done that. And I thought about Herod 327 from Takodana, Maz's castle in The Force Awakens. Just some really cool, interesting shapes. So I wanted to incorporate some of those rounded central shapes, uh, make it look industrial. I love the color scheme of things like Ray's speeder and the Jawa sand crawler. Um, and I wanted to, as an ode to kind of the uh, A New Hope original Star Wars, the side panels, I'll show you some pictures of those, are kind of a, a, an homage to the scanning crew crates on the Death Star from A New Hope. Uh, obviously it lights up with some switches and some illumination, and when you open it up, it's got your favorite beverages as well as a vial of coaxium, a red warning light that I built out of some pixel strips, and a, uh, a makeup container as a, as a kind of a holder. I ran the wires through a, uh, a, a, an opening in the back that was already there for a drain, so I didn't have to drill any holes through the insulation. And you can uh, just select your beverage of choice, and you're ready to go for your summer festivities. Obviously some cool greeblies on the inside there too. I didn't want to dirty the whole thing up too much on the inside. It's a laboratory on the inside. It's industrial on the outside. So I want to get into some descriptions of how I went about building this because I did a couple of things that I hadn't done before and they turned out really well. So the first thing was I wanted to do some sketching. Sketch out some ideas, hash out what imagery I wanted to use for this fridge to make it Star Wars. Um, had a lot of cool references in mind. And then I needed some parts uh, laser cut so I had to 3D model those up and precisely measure them so that they'd fit. While I was waiting for those I could do some wiring. I just did some basic LEDs so there'd be some illumination in the front of my prop when I was done. Not too much. When I got my laser cut parts, I needed to, to form the front ones to fit the curve of the, uh, of the fridge. So I had to heat those up. And then the flat ones, of course, uh, adhered, adhered really nice um, use, using just a Gorilla Super Glue to get these to, to fit really perfectly. Um, then once I was screwing all the parts on, began priming, got to use both my boys in this project, which was a lot of fun. Basic flat gray coat of initial primer, uh, and then we could go up from there. Next thing up, Greeblies. I wanted some really cool Greeblies, so I had some things in mind, some parts I'd been setting aside, uh, began putting those together and painting those up so that I had uh, really cool Greeblies, greeblies to, to Star Wars this prop. Okay, I'm about halfway through, as you can tell, and I wanted to point out a couple of things that I'm doing just to add levels of realism to this prop. Um, realism, what a great word. Uh, I'm, as you can tell, it's spray painted silver, metallic. I'm actually using two different types of paint. There's a, uh, uh, both of these are automotive wheel paint, so they're very durable, really nice metallic, and they dry quickly. Uh, I've got a graphite metallic and a silver. And so what I'm doing is spraying them in different patches. Uh, so the finished result is, well, let me put it this way. A lot of props that I see that are using the paint chipping effect that I'm going to attempt with this one, the paint that's chipped away always shows the same bright metallic underneath. To me, real metal props, and if you're like me and you've kind of explored real metal things in the real world to get an idea for building your props, when metal, paint is chipped away and metal is exposed, it's often oxidized or darkened, uh, and there's different types of silver metallic that's exposed through the paint chip. So I'm gonna to try to simulate that with different types of silver underneath when the paint chips are removed. Uh, toothpaste is what I use in one of these cheap metal brushes because they're fairly stiff. Um, get some toothpaste on a card and then uh, just, I kinda of wanna patiently put and apply toothpaste wherever there's gonna be kind of exposed areas, corners, ridges. Um, and for the first application, I want to kind of simulate scratches. So I want to simulate where the metal has been scratched away. So I want light brush applications and in different random directions. I'm going to simulate scratches on the corners. I'm not going to overuse it. Okay, round two of the masking. You hear the birds going nuts in the background because the door is open. Um, I don't want to do scratches because basically the last layer I want to uh, expose the scratches. 
So wherever I've masked previously, I want to dab. And this is going to make paint flecks and paint chips all around wherever there's scratches. So when I peel this back and peel this off, there'll be paint chips all around wherever there's scratches. Okay, if you've done all the steps well, then this can be the most rewarding part of the whole build. I use a paper towel. I've also got a damp shop cloth. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wipe off um, the areas where I'd use the toothpaste. Sometimes I need to get my fingernail in there and kind of just scratch it away. I want to be careful not to damage too much and then when I've got some goopy toothpaste on my cloth I just fold it over so that I'm not wiping more goopy toothpaste onto my prop. Okay, this is a pretty simple technique. I used a uh, stencil that I cut out on the vinyl cutter to make the uh, some of the patterns. This is my facsimile of what I think is a coaxium symbol from one of the containers in Solo. Um, so I did something similar for my coaxium containment unit. And the uh, ZZ decal is my, uh, my representation of, uh, I think I, I used a Lego decal or a model decal as a reference image. Um, those are on the uh, starships, the starfighters, the rebel starfighters, and nobody can seem to tell me why. The best um, rumor I heard is from Josh, uh, Eastern 57, who thinks that uh, he heard that it's a reference to a home base, in which case, starfighters, you have hyperdrives, you use hyperfuel. So the story of this prop is that the, uh, this containment unit came from that home base, this rebel army surplus. That's how I got it. Um, so anyways, before I stenciled, I, I used some, um, I applied some toothpaste with the brush um, before I, uh, before I spray painted it. And now I'm going to use this tuck tape. You want to be careful with this. This is really, really sticky stuff. Um, it can tear your paint right off, which is kind of the idea, as you can see. I apply it, and wherever the toothpaste was applied, the paint lifts off. I'm not going to actually use any rub and buff on the metallic because the uh, two types of silver uh, and the gray primer actually give me the diversity of look that I was looking for. Um, I finished a black wash overall and uh, really the last thing left to do is I'm using this um, it's uh, I just got this on Amazon it's just a natural earth powder it's non-allergenic um, it's just a, a kind of like a clay powder and what I'm doing is just gently applying that in a couple of different spots and not too much, just, just subtle. And what this simulates is it's dust. One of the ideal places for this uh, clay powder is, uh, I don't want to put too much on, right in the black textured groove there. Now if you find that you've put on too much, this is a great example. Have a compressor nearby, and just gently on the air. And you can basically just remove some. I know there's at least two other prop makers that have built a Star Wars beer fridge that uh, I'll be linking in the description to their videos and any others that I find that, that may have joined the challenge along with us that I wasn't aware of. I'll be posting those so that you can see all the videos and we can all have fun together. And in case you want to do a fun project like this, you'll have lots of ideas and lots of know-how to tackle your prop project. I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's a beautiful prop that's going to make a fine addition to my shop just in time for summer. So have fun building your props. Thanks again for watching.